Morning everyone, it's Phil Kay here, the head gardener at Nest Botanic Gardens. Uh, so join me here. Um, bit of an overcast. Um, it was raining before, but plants like it. I'm not sure we do. Um, so as I say, I've, uh, I'm the head gardener. I've been here since 2006. I've been the head gardener since 2016. And uh, obviously work as part of a very, very good team. Um, obviously couldn't really be here without that team. Um, everyone part plays a vital role. Uh, everyone helps out. Obviously, this year has been a very interesting year for us all. Um, even the garden team working from home for a, a section, so that was interesting. Um, but we've all, in various ways, pulled through um, and continue to deliver what we can. Have a really good service at Ness. So I'll say I'll do a bit of a walk around, um, a little bit of a history update, and uh, yeah, take it from there. Okay, here goes. So just spin you around so as you see here we've got the visitor center so this was opened in 2006 um, obviously updated our facilities here at Ness so as a visitor greeted by various nice signage so we're open from 10 till 4 we've got various nice display beds this is one of our salvia beds so inside we've got a nice cafe we've got a nice shop we do have other facilities for weddings and conferences. Um, I'm actually here quite an early early morning so that's all locked up at the moment. So we've also got our plant sales which is run by Dovecot. Quite nicely stocked at the moment. So off to the left, so this is Mickwell House. So this was actually our founder's house and this was built in 1898. I'll take you around to it. So Arthur was a, a cotton merchant over in Liverpool and really liked to bring his family over this side of the, the world. Uh, it was actually, I think, situated in West Kirby in that area. So he, uh, he really liked the area and decided to set up his uh, set up shop here. So as I say, it's like an older red brick and there's quite a lot of this red brick material houses in the local area which is quite nice it's not the most attractive of buildings I quite like it. it's got a bit of a sweet charm to it the section straight ahead of us this was actually built just for his son an entire wing which is uh, not something you can do nowadays he used to have a billiard table inside so we have we do have various facilities in here this is a what we call a bully room bullies used to be old bullies tea room so again, this can be used for various conferencing. We've got another room at the back. Just take you through the side route. So Bully chose this location because of the, it's got its own little microclimate. Uh, as I say, we're situated on the D-Estuary. I'll show you a bit more of that soon. Let's walk you over to Quite a new addition, probably in the past. Well, I think since 2016, we've been developing this this location. So, this is actually where visitors would, and anyone who enters the gardens, come straight in. I'll just take you to the start. So we've had to adapt various various entrances and exits due to COVID, um, but we've provided quite a nice display so far. Wow, this. I've been off for a week and the wildflowers are really coming through now. So that'll be a fantastic, fantastic display. So yeah, as I say, this has uh, come to this point and enter in. And we've got nice new display signage. Have a bit of an update what goes on in the gardens, a bit of history update on what our botanic garden is. So this is the this is the map. So as I say, we are just here now. So the, the way it's basically situated around Mickwell Brow, around this space, and we've basically got vistas over over to Wales in various directions. So as you can see, we've got various nice pine woods, which I'll hopefully take a quick walk through. The woodland garden, the kitchen garden, herbaceous borders, a nice Mediterranean garden, which is under development. Um, picnic lawn, we've also got a nice azalea collection in and around this area. Um, maybe a quick look to the wildflower meadow, water gardens, 
nice little woodland garden, lovely little rock garden, and also the south facing terrace too, with various ponds as well. So as I say, these are our family order beds. So this gives a bit of a sort of a hint of the botanical aspect of what we provide. This is actually the sunflower family, so we basically show different plants within that family. We've got a nice poaceae family bed. Um, so I should say actually that the areas are split up into various um, sections with various team members looking after those. Um, we've got a team of seven, one is part time, the other's an assistant, so they all have their own their own spaces. So this is looked after by Nigel Powley. Does a great job because he's developed this poesy bed. This year we decided to change it. it used to be a monocot bed. Uh, we changed it to poesy, so a lot of the basically the grass family. So it's a this will be a nice display to come and see. Plantagenaceae family, so things like um, foxgloves, penstemons, hebes. Also Ranunculaceae, so the, the buttercup family, so things like delphiniums. Um, Pulsatellas, hellebores, really nice display at the moment. Mint family, so Lamiaceae. So that's got quite a nice display, so a lot of salvias, lavenders. So we're just doing a bit of work here, we've been reducing our hollies, so that will provide quite a nice vista in the season. So now I've just been developing the, the north bank, so this is basically north facing. As you can see a bit of a hint on the herbaceous borders. I'll just take you around and show you the decked area. So this is a new, a new addition. We've also got the rosaceae family, so obviously roses, also GMs various other things so it's got, again it gives quite a nice display for the public and anyone else who comes to see nest so this is actually one of the spaces we can provide for indoor weddings um, also a backup for the outdoor wedding spaces so you've got this nice brand new deck that's been here for a few years now so it's a nice pile it's done a great job developing the planting on this space. Quite a tr really tricky spot. Very, uh, unfortunately quite a high weed population, but he's done a great job developing new herbaceous plantings on this site. So we've got the pine woods over here. So this was actually originally put in as a shelter belt um, and became an underplanted space for rhododendrons, which um, in certain times of the year do really struggle but we're working on keeping the collection going um, but at certain times of the year sort of early spring mid springs fantastic display in there still nonetheless so we have as a botanic garden quite a few different collections one of the main ones is sorbus um, betula so Tim, the botanist, does a great job in uh, keeping the collection going, updating all the records. There's quite a lot of behind the scenes work that gets done that isn't seen by the public. A lot of labelling, um, just general auditing. Quite a lot of big, big, uh, big process and a lot of work goes into that. Also a lot of um, seed exchange, plant exchange with various other botanic gardens across the world, uh, as well as in our own country. Um, so yeah, obviously keeps everyone busy. So the garden team look after the um, the grounds. We also do have our volunteers. Um, now again, they've been postponed due to COVID, but they are actually back um, in a lighter form at the moment. Um, they're enjoying being back, which is really good. Obviously, nice to see see everyone back as well. Um, it's been quite a staggered approach um, as I say the team had obviously various furloughed and just trying to keep everyone safe so we've only just recently reintroduced them and various changes to the way they they manage their site so it seems to be going well so far so that's good obviously again certain times of the year we really struggle without volunteers and we again we couldn't really do it with the, the amount of dedication they've given to us as well so this is the uh, part of the 
Mediterranean garden. Provides a really nice display. So we do have designs and ideas to adapt this space into various sections of the Mediterranean rather than just the Mediterranean as a whole. G equally actually provides a nice display as a Mediterranean planting. So obviously we've got quite nice sandy soils, but quite a mix actually around the site of this actually aids us to grow various different things in various different locations. That area is quite a nice sandy free draining soil, similar to certain conditions in the Mediterranean, so it does allow for newer plantings. One good thing, again, Nessa's microclimate, we have really hot, sometimes really hot summers, obviously, unfortunately. We do have some cold snaps, which we do have to ensure things are propagated to keep the collection going. So we enter the herbaceous area. So this was actually Arthur Bully's wife's sort of really interest. She loved to do herbaceous planting, so the old herbaceous plantings used to run across the lawn. Um, Arthur would obviously send people across the across the globe plant hunting. Um, George Forrest was one of our more well-known ones to Ness. It's Frank Kingdom Ward, quite a, many different ones. They would provide seed collected from the wild, bring it in. It was sold under bullies seeds at the time. So this is our herbaceous border. Not much to see at the moment, but we've uh, we've undertaken a bit of redevelopment on this. A uh, bit of a tough call, but we've, uh, we're going ahead with a new design, new idea. Um, this section was actually heavily um, struggling with uh, convolvulus or bindweed. So that took a while to get back on top of. I think probably still still struggling. So we've actually got a membrane and um, bark chip on this to keep it down. So this section up to this point here is going to be the Americas. Or, sorry, America. Um, with various different herbaceous plantings from that section. There'll be a grass pass. And then another section, all similar length. So there'll be three blocks with two grass, well, three grass paths, one at the very end. So the next section, the next section will be Europe and Asia, and the last section will be um, South Africa, if I'm not mistaken. So again, yeah, quite a lot of work going into this behind the scenes. Um, Ian's look responsible, Ian Miles is responsible for looking after this area, um, keeping it going. So he's working on that with um, myself, and Nick Lightfoot, the garden collections manager, and also Louise Emerson, one of the garden team. She's working really hard on that too. So. Yeah, we've got quite an historic old azalea border. Um, we've done various prunings to that. So that provides a really nice display. Actually, not long finished flowering, to be honest. So usually May is a good time. Um, we've got some Ness Holt azaleas over there, which were propagated by Denny Pratt. So they're, they're, um, they've just finished flowering, actually, now. would provide a really nice late late um, flowering display. Let's see a bit more of the north bank there. Nice roses here. So this space is a, a little bit of an interim between areas. Um, this area originally was designed by Chris Beardshaw. It was called the Nespatanish Garden. Still is the Nespatanish Garden, but a little bit of a different display in what he originally created. This was originally an auditorium, grass auditorium, which provides a bit of a challenge for mowing, but Ian does a good job. Um, so mainly just a, a basis planting, the idea was a prairie style planting and actually it was a cross section if, if it was really elevated you would see a cross section of a stem. Um, various trees and plantings were designed for the Zion and Phloem, the plant. So this is actually something we're starting, we've started this year, so this is the Agapanthus trial. Can't, not much to see at the moment but it's basically with um, witch. The company which so we're doing a, a trial with those to decide and give basically a audit and um, information on how various agapanthus grow so we basically start looking at when the when the flowers come through and how, what sort of interest they provide in the garden for also so obviously these these will then go out to the and uh, give people a better understanding of what what grows best um, not much to see at the moment, as I say. A few flower stalks coming out. 
So this is for a three year, three year trial. Nature garden. So it's my responsibility to go through um, weekly. Now they've actually started. I'm not sure we've got a, an opening of the of the buds there nearly. So I go through and monitor. Simply monitor what information you can see on those, and that goes into lists, which then gets sent off to which, and they can use that information the way they do. So we're also looking at a uh, sedum trial. Um, so that is going to go up in this location here. Ready for planting. I might not actually go into the pine woods because there is a sprinkler going on in there. I don't fancy getting wet. So this is the rhododendron border. So as I say, originally it was a shelter belt with the pines. And then underplanted with various different specimens of rhododendrons, provide a really nice display. So this is looked after by Ian, a couple of volunteers. We've got a very interesting planting of echium through here. Um, actually originated from the Canary Islands, but grow actually almost as weeds for us. But we're actually really interesting weeds, we really like them. Start with a 